Well, there we were, in the teeth of a roaring gale, bound for the coast of Malaguay with a cargo of slum gudgeons. Oh, wait a minute. Different ship. Sorry about that. <laughs> oh, surrender the booty or we'll fire! We're getting the booty out, but we're still going to shoot. <laughs> Ready, got a Fire it, Will! Fire the hole! About a second out there and I jumped off and the yard arm kind of pushed out a little bit and came back it didn't hit me in the face but came fairly close probably about a foot and I had Breton down there videotaping it and then hit the water came up and you could tell Bill was uh, pretty happy that uh, you know I came up but then Breton had to go and I think he was pretty sad about that but yeah it was a good time and then ever since I've been asking Bill if I could jump off the yard arms and uh, he doesn't even think about it now, he just automatically says no. Well, I to say, well, Show me your tattoo. Alright. Well, I don't know, I've been on the rover for five years now and it's um, definitely quite a bit of my life. Today's my day off, I'm here at work. So I uh, figured why not have a little piece of it on me to uh, bring home. So this is a uh, Jolly Rover, Becca did it in the aft cabin. After a trip, a week trip up to Marathon, and um, yeah, so she means a lot to me. And how do you recall the experience of being tattooed? I remember it as excruciating pain. Um, I never knew the boat could hurt me that much, <laughs> but um, it was definitely well worth it. You made interesting sounds. I did, yeah. Can you replicate them? Um, I don't think I can. I, I used up all of that energy at the gym earlier today. <laughs> yeah, it was, uh, I could feel the needle going into my ribs. <laughs> How is it for you? Yeah, it's good. <laughs> Making things pretty. It's a nice platform to work on. Right? And brushing my teeth. It's a nice floating dock. <laughs> Pull your hands away. We call this pinging the cruise ships, and you'll understand what we mean by that. All right, Lisa, you ready? Oh, good. You get a wave run or two. Go for it. Yay. Fire the hole! Fire the hole! Ow! Ow! Got it! Oh, 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 oh.
We're gonna have to blast them, guys. Oh, yeah. We're gonna have to blast them. I don't see any booty coming out. All right, we're gonna shoot them, guys. Are ready? Cover your ears. Cover your ears. Fire away! Fire in the hole. Oh, 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 all of my memories of the rover are related to being supported by a certain degree of spirit. It seems inherent in this vessel. One of them was sailing to the reef and back on Wreckers Race, where we had a total of 14 sails aloft, some of which we coined Dexels, which we flew from one point to the other and were literally pieces of canvas tied on either corner. But the most amazing thing to me about this ship has been years of support for my art and piratically themed mindsets, which are few and far between in the modern world, and I appreciate it endlessly. That's all I got. That's it. Uh, but she has been such a fun boat. A floating Disney World, I tell everyone. It's just amazing what we do with this boat. Um, over the nine years, I could probably give Chris here 10, 12 hours worth of stuff. Scouts throwing up, getting it on video. They laugh about it later. The fish that we've caught on this boat, if we put them all on the boat, in the end, at one time, it would probably literally sink the boat. We've caught so many fish on here. Much to the delight of the scouts. Uh, one of my favorite scout uh, expeditions. We had a group on here from Kansas uh, of the 20 or so scouts and leaders on board. They <laughs> Only a couple of them had ever seen saltwater before so it was a big thrill for them to get out and we do something on this boat called the 100 Fathom Club. We let them jump uh, over the side in six to eight hundred feet of water. Beautiful, beautiful blue indigo water from the Gulf Stream. Flat calm. They get to swim around for 30 or 40 minutes with no bottom. Uh, it's an amazing uh, thing if you've ever experienced it. Uh, that deep, deep blue water, when the scouts were coming up, I made a crack at them just to make a little fun with it. I told them, when you guys get back now, you're going to have to tell all your friends and your teachers, your parents, how you got that blue tent on your face, and you just tell them it came from this water here. And they're all looking at one another. They're from Kansas. They didn't know any. So they're all looking, and one of the kids actually said, wow, how am I going to get rid of this? He's looking at his hand. He says, i got to get rid of this powers of suggestion uh, with an amazing kid you just never know what they're gonna come up with uh, and then there was the one where we asked a little guy named Noah of all things uh, if he had heard of the mutiny on the bounty we show that movie uh, the bounty uh, on every trip so the kids can get a good sense of nautical history and I have one of the sea base mates with me and I say Thomas come over here so I asked Noah I'm trying to show him that these kids just don't know about such historical events as the mutiny on the bounty. I say, Noah, you know about the mutiny on the bounty? He says, no, what's, what's that? He said, you never heard of the bounty? He said, no. And I said, you've never heard of this ever, anybody mentioned it? And then he looks up at me and he says, what's a mutiny? It was just hysterical. The kid didn't even know what a mutiny was. It wasn't our place to tell him what, what being on a boat and all. Uh, but due to uh, Bill Malone's generosity and letting us have so much fun with this boat. It has been an amazing eight or nine years. It's just uh, it's just been a fun thing. Bill Malone, thank you for having such a beautiful boat and letting us play and have fun with it. It certainly was a great pleasure knowing uh, uh, Captain Bill Malone. Uh, he, he, he's a wonderful guy, uh, a generous guy, and he's got a fair bit of salt on his ass.